So some of the students had some questions about what the rules are when you're 3D printing an object. And the first thing you're going to consider is what orientation are you going to print the object in. And so generally people just sort of blop, put the object on the bed like so vertically. And when you design that, you need to consider all of your angles. If they are steeper than 60 degrees, they're going to need some form of support. So you can design your part to not require any support as we have with this channel at the bottom here and uh, that raised bridge section. But this part was designed with contouring in mind, right? It's, it holds a plumb bob and the plumb bob sleeves into this hexagonal form and then the string can be wrapped by these channels. But the channels themselves are designed as hexagons because we take advantage of that 60 degree angle so we can print from the side view location without any support or additionally from the vertical location again without any support. Now printing it so that your material is flat to the table like so is ideal because it handles the structural loading of these wings to the left and right flank. So what am I talking about? Well when we go through slicing the part the deflectional loading of things going in can force the edges to break and if that happens uh, you end up having to make a new part so the orientation that's strongest for the plumb bob is one that's going along the z-axis as we can see here so there's a I believe a 20 or 30 percent infill call here and then three shells going around the surface to give it lots of structure and handle those edges bending but you'll notice that the whole thing can print without support because the top of that hexagon right here, it's about three millimeters, okay? And that's probably the max bridging you can get away with without the filament sort of drooping from gravity. Now, these rules are completely different if you're going from SLA, uh, printing with light and resin. But here, since we're working with filament, we're going to stick with the standard no support rules, 60 degree angles, etc. And if we were to no, and if we were gonna take the object and rotate it, da, 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 and other okay, there we go, and around the z-axis as well, put it on the platform, boop, and then that's great. And show me a preview. Blah 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 blah. blah. As the part gets sliced, you can run up the z-axis and then see how the layering would work differently. Let's have a moment. There we go. So let's make it big. Here we go. So as we start at the bottom again, we have that same bridge that happens, right? As the hexagon starts to fill, there's the start, there's the fill pattern, and then the hexagonal packing, and all the way up. And this takes advantage of those same rotation criteria. Now, generally you can print an object at a 60 degree overhang. So if you were to take this object and just say like, I'd like to rotate it about the Y axis, you could get away with assuming that the corner wasn't radius and was stably bonded. You could get away with printing it basically like that. It's got to be on the platform. okay? But that would be a successful print as long as this little edge case scenario was contacting the bed with enough surface area to not tip over. The problem with that is the linear axis that goes across slicing these layers would just sit there and uh, make the edges prone to breaking. So even though you can get away with printing it, if this is your final object in 3D printed form, uh, the left flank, the upper flank, would be more prone to snapping off than the bottom flank at a slightly different site. Okay. Now if you're casting this out of metal, you don't care about any of that. You're just like, how do I get my object to function? But as we go through here we go. As we go through, you can see exactly where the shear plane would be for the first left top flank and then again for the bottom right flank. So generally you want to consider all your options on how am I going to make this part and then what kind of load is it going to see. 
So that's sort of a quick overview, and then we'll do the same thing with um, uh, jewelry applications.